So in this video, I'm doing a super long UK journey from Manchester to St. Ives in Cornwall in my 2021 Tesla Model 3 long range. This round trip, including many stops and adventures, is over 900 miles. So how does the Tesla do? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I got on, any problems we faced, and there were a couple, and I'll talk about the ride experience, and at the end, we'll talk about the cost of this journey, and I think that's really gonna shock you. Plus, I'll show you a little of what we did on our travels to Cornwall, so keep watching. So as some of you may be aware, I don't actually have a home charger. So on my last day in the office, I went to use one of Manchester's free BEV chargers. You know, they're really slow, but I'm hoping this will take me close to a 100% charge ready for the journey the next day. So I arrived at the charger with a 58% charge and plugged in. And it's a pretty simple charger to use. It's not the fastest, but you do get four hours of free charging and parking. So I plugged it in and headed to work. So I left the car charging and it was getting around seven to eight kilowatts. So I thought I was gonna get an almost 100% charge in the four hours I could park there for free. But when I got to the office, I thought I'd just turn on sentry mode and take a look to make sure the car was uh, still charging. And unfortunately it's dropped down to four kilowatts. Now I've used this one a few times and on some chargers when another car connects, it does drop down. Now this one usually doesn't, so I'm quite surprised by that. So it's dropped down to four kilowatts, uh, which means it's gonna only fully charge in about six and a half hours and I can't stay there that long. So it looks like we're going to Cornwall on probably between 75 to 80% charge, but we'll get back to the car in a bit and uh, check it out. Okay, so we're back in the car and it looks like uh, the charging speeds actually went up. Uh, as you saw in the office, it actually dropped down to four kilowatts. It's now uh, back up to seven and it's just literally just dropped down now uh, to four again, but we are nearly at 100%. We're at about 96% charge, which is really good. It's saying we're gonna get a roughly about 325 miles range out of this state of charge, which is okay. I was expecting a little bit higher, but um, I've now got to drive home six miles, leave it overnight, it's gonna be a pretty chilly night. So I'll come back to you tomorrow and we'll see how much range we have on this battery. So once I got home, I started to do the final prep for the journey and gave the car a good wash. Now, I do think it's pretty important to clean your Tesla before a long journey, as there are cameras and sensors all over the car. So if you're gonna be using autopilot, it's a good idea to have these as clean as possible. So the next morning, I got showered and ready for the journey. So whilst I had a coffee, I fired up the app and turned on the climate control to both warm the car for us and to help warm the batteries. And this is definitely one of the things I love about the Tesla. So even though there's only two of us, we're going for two weeks and we're actually gonna be working when we're down there too. So we both had all of our clothes, laptops, cameras, and other bits and bobs to take with us on the journey. The Model 3 has a really nice boot space. Plus you can use the frunk and you can also use the area where you can store your charging cables. So you do get a lot of usable space. Okay, so the car's packed and we're ready to go to Cornwall. I'm gonna do a couple of things here. Um, so if we look at the screen, you can see we're now at 93%. Um, when we got home, we were about 94, 95. So I've dropped a couple of percent overnight, but I've preheated the car for 10 or 15 minutes to help with the braking regen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set um, the energy display from energy to distance. And it's saying that with a 93% battery, we've got a 311 mile range. I thought it would be a little bit higher than that, but it is pretty cold today. So we'll see how that does. I'm now gonna enter the destination and we'll see what it estimates for us. Okay, so our estimations, we've got 312 miles of range right now. And it's saying that we should stop at the Gordano services for a 50 minute supercharge uh, and then on to Cornwall. Now I do know there is another supercharger down here on the border of uh, Cornwall and Devon. So I'm gonna do one there as well, just so we have more than 10% when we arrive in St. Ives. But um, let's see how we go. So we've got 312 miles, uh, the Gordano services, uh, it doesn't say how far away it is, but we'll see um, if we can begin that trip and, and we'll see how the battery does as we go along. It's a total of 351 miles, six hours and 20 minutes. So when you plan a journey in a Tesla, you actually get an energy graph as well. So I'm gonna load that up here. So if you can see here, you normally have this consumption graph at the top, which gives you your kind of average consumption or average estimated consumption. Here with trip, 
um, you'll get this when you put in a destination. So you can see we're set at 92, 93% and we're expected to have 17% of battery, which is you know, quite low. As I say, it's only seven degrees today. So I'm hoping we don't go below that figure because we might have to find a supercharger before then, if that's the case. But anyway, let's head on and see how we do. So we're on our way and I'll be honest, I'm quite looking forward to this drive. I've only had the car since March, 2021. So this is my first real world long distance test in the Model 3. Now the journey to our first supercharger is around about three hours. And you know what, the journey was surprisingly clear for most of this part of the journey. Leaving Manchester on a Saturday morning, I really did expect it to be much busier. So on a lot of the uh, Tesla Facebook groups, people say when you do a long journey, you should turn off the air con, turn off your radio, uh, drive at 60 miles an hour, all to con you know, conserve energy. But I don't want to do that. You know, I didn't buy a 50 grand car to sit in the car freezing cold or too hot. You know, I'm not going to drive crazy, but I'm just going to drive normally like I would with any car. If it gets too hot, I'll put the air con on. If it gets too cold, I'll put the heaters on. Um, you know, I want to drive comfortably and I want to enjoy the journey. I want to have Spotify playing. So uh, this is like a true test of what it's like to actually own the car in the real world. You know, I'm sure, yes, we could get another five or 10 miles of range if we turned everything off. But to be honest, I think I'd rather just stop earlier at a supercharger or charge for five, 10 minutes longer just so I can use all of the extra features uh, you know, within the car. Um, I'm also gonna be using autopilot for as much of the journey as I can, to be honest. It's like one of the main reasons why I purchased the car because I do a lot of long journeys and, and it can get quite tiring. So I'm looking forward to testing out autopilot on this journey. So we cruised along nicely, really enjoying the ride. However, just past Birmingham, there were some roadworks for a large distance, maybe 30 miles or so. So we were stuck doing 50 miles per hour or slower for quite some time. To be honest, I just popped on autopilot and let the car deal with the stress of the slow moving traffic. Now, once out of traffic again, I just popped on autopilot and let the car do the heavy work. And this is something I'm really enjoying with the car. I only have the basic autopilot package. And for journeys like this, where you're just on one long stretch of road, this works really, really well. Now that said, we did experience phantom braking for the first time. Unfortunately, I didn't get to film it, but we were driving along at 70 miles an hour and the car just did an emergency brake for literally no reason. Luckily, no one was around us or behind us, and there just didn't seem to be any reason at all uh, for this to happen. There wasn't any sunlight or anything on the road. It was definitely a little scary if you're not expecting it, but if you just push down on the accelerator, it does take control and you can start driving again. But yeah, it was a little bit odd. Okay, so we've got about one mile to go until we get to the supercharger. I'm really impressed actually. The energy graph is now showing that we'll arrive with 31% um, of the battery left and originally it said I think it said around 17% so that's really impressive it really underestimated that so anyway let's go find the supercharger now when we pulled into the services the car park was super busy and I was definitely a little worried that the superchargers would be full but you know what actually most of them were free so we plugged in and as you can see we arrived with 116 miles left now the journey was 163 miles, so we should have got there with around 148 miles. So essentially we lost around 32 miles. And you know what? I don't think that's too bad. Now, after plugging in, we were getting around 117 kilowatts and it said we'd have a full charge in about 40 minutes. So we popped into the services for a well-earned lunch and a toilet break. So whilst we were queuing for lunch, I just checked in on the car just to see how we were doing and make sure it was still charging. I definitely recommend doing this with public chargers as sometimes, as you'll see later on, it isn't always this smooth. So after a KFC rice box, we headed back to the car and we had around 300 miles of range, which was absolutely fantastic. Now, just a quick pointer here. If you are using a supercharger, uh, there is an idle fee of around 50 pence or one pound per minute once your charging has finished. So do make sure you get back to your car as soon as that charging is nearly ready to finish. Now, it also shows you the cost of the charge at £13.50. Now, this won't actually cost me anything due to the referral miles I have, which is really great. So we've just had a quick KFC. We've come back in the car and we got our 
80 or 90% charge done, which is really, really cool. It was actually really quick. It said it would take about 30 minutes and it took about 20 to 25, which is really good. So if you look at the map now, um, we're now on our way from Bristol down to St. Ives. Uh, and it says we're gonna get to our destination with 15% battery left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the supercharger halfway down, just so that we have a lot of charge once we're in Cornwall because we wanna be driving around during the week. And I don't think there's too many chargers in St. Ives. So we'll put that in and uh, we'll set that as our destination. So now we're back on the road heading to the Lifton supercharger. And one thing I realized whilst doing this journey was that I was actually following a similar path to fellow YouTuber Spawnpoint, who has a white Tesla Model 3 and did a trip to Carbis Bay from Yorkshire. So definitely check out his video as he has the 2020 Tesla Model 3 in white. And I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check out his video too. So whilst we're on this second part of the journey and we've been in the car for quite a few hours, what is the ride quality like? Well, I'll be honest, I'm very, very impressed. I've owned a fair few cars and I would definitely put this right near the top for ride comfort. The seats are just great. So we're now approaching the Lifton superchargers and as you can see, the batteries are preheating once again. So we found the Lifton chargers are in a real nice small village tucked away in the back of a hotel car park. And once again, they were actually very quiet with not many people here at all. So we've plugged it in and as you can see, this one is pulling in a little slower speed at 90 kilowatts. And you know what, even though we didn't need to do this charge to get to the destination, I just wanted to make sure we had as much charge as possible for driving around once we had arrived in Cornwall. So we just popped into this lovely little coffee shop and grabbed some coffee and some cake. Now again, we arrived at this supercharger with 151 miles left. And the distance from Gordano services to this was 107 miles. So we went from 300 miles to 150, essentially losing 150 miles for a 107 mile trip. So it does seem that the mileage counter is definitely a little out. It doesn't bother me too much, but already we're 75 miles lower than predicted. Look, I'll just let you guys discuss that in the comments because I do know this is a hot topic. So anyway, we charged up to 329 miles and with only 70 miles left to go, we arrived at the Tesco's in St. Ives with 239 miles left. So as we were staying in a fully self-contained house, we needed to grab a full food shop and just do a bit of shopping. Now, even though I really didn't need a charge at this point, there is a free charger here at this Tesco's and it's one of the only chargers in St. Ives. So I thought I'd plug in here and just top up a little more. However, the app just would not find the charger. For whatever reason, it seemed to be down and it would just not let me activate this free charge. So it gives you kind of like five to 15 minutes of free charging, but even that didn't work. It just stopped after five minutes. I came back out of the supermarket, tried to activate it again, and it just didn't work. So it looked like today this charger was down. So with the shopping done, we had arrived in St. Ives. Now, if you've never been here before, this is a really beautiful spot in the UK and somewhere me and my wife really enjoy coming to. The sea here is just crystal clear and we're both from beach areas where we grew up. So it just feels like home every time we're here. Now, if you love the beach or want to try your hand at surfing, kayaking, or just want to visit a nice ancient UK fishing village, this is definitely somewhere to check out. And here are a few shots. So after a couple of days of working, we took our first adventure out to visit the Lost Gardens of Heligan. So today we're off to the Lost Gardens of Heligan. Um, luckily we've still got 70% charge in the battery, but we did find out something a bit tricky. Um, as you might have seen already, um, the charger, the free charger in the Tesco's wasn't working at all. Um, but that wasn't a problem because there's a Tesla charger in Carvis Bay. But I've just seen in Carpus Bay, it's uh, closed due to renovation works and the Tesla charger is, a, is within a fence. Um, so I can't get there either. So I'm hoping that when we've done this journey today, because it's an hour and 15 there, an hour and 15 back, we might explore a bit when we're there. I'm a bit worried that we're gonna be a little bit low or starting to get a bit low on charge. So I'm gonna give the Tesco's charger another charge when we get back. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to find another charger in another town because there's only two chargers here in St. Ives. But anyway, on to 
the Lost Gardens of Heligan. So the journey to the Lost Gardens was quite straightforward. However, as you get close, as with much of Cornwall, the roads are a nightmare to drive down if you've never used them before. They are extremely, extremely narrow and they really just seem wide enough for one car. But would you believe it? Cars can actually come from the other direction. This is a two-way road. So you'll always be trying to find laybys and fields just to pull into to let other traffic pass if you can. So we got to the gardens and spent a nice little afternoon here. It was a cold day, but the place is really impressive and somewhere I'd definitely recommend. It's good for older people or kids too, as they do have a little farm here as well. Now after this, we took the Tesla back on the road to check out the small fishing town of Nevergissi. It's a small little fishing village with a few nice shops and a large harbour area. And it was about 7 degrees Celsius here when we were here, so we didn't stay too long. But we had a nice walk around the town and just to the end of the harbour wall. Again, the Tesla handled everything perfectly, especially the incredibly steep hills. It's just no match at all for the Tesla. Our next day out was a place myself and my wife have always wanted to visit, and it's called the Manak Theatre. Now, before I show you the theatre, we noticed there was actually a free charger here, which was fantastic. The spot is very remote, so not only did we have a great day out, but we got a free charge whilst we were looking around. Now, this is the Manak Theatre. This whole theatre was built by an old lady called Rowena Cade, who began building this by hand with some gardeners in 1932. It is literally a performance theatre built onto the side of some cliffs over the sea. Honestly, it's one of the most impressive places we have ever been. The views are just on a whole new level and to think someone built this by hand without any big machinery is just incredible. So you can be sitting here watching a play and a whale could be swimming past in the distance. It's just amazing. So after spending about an hour and a half here, we left the Manak Theatre with a 70% charge and decided to head down to the town of Penzance. Again, as we're relying on public chargers, I found a free charger at a local Tesco supermarket. Plugged in, activated the charge, and off we went. So we walked 30 minutes into the town before getting a notification that the charge had stopped after 15 minutes, which was really annoying. So anyway, we continued our little tour of Penzance, which is a nice little small town, and uh, after we'd seen that, we just jumped back in the car because we really wanted to see St. Michael's Mount and Marazion. Now again, this is just an incredible place to see. St. Michael's Mount is a small island which actually has 30 people living on the island permanently. There's also a man-made causeway, which means you can actually walk to the island when the tide is out. After taking a few photos, we had a walk around Marazion, which is the little village opposite. And this is somewhere that we would definitely come back to. It's only a small village, but it has a few nice pubs and restaurants you can visit. So over the next few days, we stayed local to St. Ives, trying out some of the various restaurants and walks the town has to offer. And even though the temperature didn't get much above 10 degrees Celsius, we just had a fantastic time. It's just such a beautiful place. Now, on the second week, we decided to visit Truro and Falmouth. Truro is actually the only city in Cornwall, and they're both nice places for a day out to visit. Falmouth is one of Cornwall's big university towns, so it's definitely worth a visit. They have a lot of boats here and a nice beach as well. Now, with a few days left, we spent most of our time relaxing in St. Ives before our holiday was up and it was time to head home. Unfortunately, it's come to the end of our stay here in St. Ives in Cornwall. We've absolutely loved it. We just love this place. Uh, and we're back in the car. Now, as you know, I've been charging for free at the Tesco's down the road, and it's a very slow charger, so I didn't get a full charge. Um, if you check out the screen, I'm only on about 73% battery, uh, which gives us 246 miles, it says here. So I'm gonna navigate to, I'm just gonna put in the Trafford Center, even though it's not, it's kind of close to where we live. Um, so let's just do that and let's see what it says. So, now turn right as you can see, it's now saying we should have 
a um, 30 minute stop at the lifting supercharger and we were planning on doing that it's actually a really good shout that one i saw that on a spawn point video just really great coffee in a great shop uh, another one uh, on the northbound near it looks like near bristol and then we should uh, be home almost um, with 14 percent battery life it says 351 miles and six hours and 47 so that's what we're going to do let's begin the trip and we'll just see how we got on with that energy graph So we arrived at Lifton with 139 miles range left. Again, from a battery display point of view, we used 107 miles for a 71 mile trip. This is why I would always recommend popping your car into percentage rather than miles, as it really does help reduce range anxiety, as the miles range always seems to be a little bit off. Now, after the top up, we headed to the next supercharger in the Michael Wood services. And this one was set back from the services in a hotel car park. Now, I did spot that this car park uses ANPR to scan your license plate. And it says it fines anyone 100 pounds for not being registered in the hotel. So I did go into the hotel and they claimed we didn't need to register. So I'm just hoping that we don't get a parking fine. On this charge, we were pulling 112 kilowatts, which was pretty nice. And we needed a 30 minute charge. So once that was done, we were back on the road. Now, the journey back to Manchester wasn't that busy and I was quite surprised about that, but there were some big periods of heavy rain. But you know what? The Tesla handled all that perfectly. Okay, so we're nearly home and it's not too bad of a journey, but it's saying we're gonna arrive home with about 20% battery life left. And as you know, I don't have a home charger. So I've actually stopped at a supercharger, uh, which is about 35 miles away from my house because I want to get kind of like a, a full charge here just so when I arrive home I've got enough charge to last me the week for getting to work. So we're just going to have a quick charge here before we make this kind of our final stop before we get home. Okay so now for the all important part. How much did this 900 mile plus journey cost? Well I think you're going to be really shocked. Charge number one was the pre-drive charge in Manchester city centre and this charge was free of charge. Charge number two was at Gordano Services. Now, even though this said £13.50, I used a friend's referral link when buying my car, so this charge was free of charge. So if you're planning on buying a Tesla, make sure you use a friend's Tesla referral link, or you can use my referral link, which I'll put in the description, and that gets you a thousand free charging miles before you buy your car. So this also means that all of the other superchargers I used on this journey were completely free of charge. So number three, the Lifton charger, this was free too. Number four, at Tesco's, this charge didn't work. So we didn't get any charge and obviously it didn't cost anything. Now charge number five was at Tesco's midweek and we charged here for five hours and that five hours was completely free. Charge number six was at the Manac Theatre and that was free charging with free parking too. Now charge number seven at the Tesco's was again free of charge. And of course, the two superchargers on the way home were completely free. So the entire journey cost nothing. That's right, absolutely free. Can you believe that? This is a huge trip and we didn't spend a single penny or pound on fuel. How amazing is that? Okay, so now I'm back. Would I recommend a Tesla Model 3 for a long trip or holiday? Well, you know what? I would. I really enjoyed the entire trip and I just can't believe we did that entire 900 mile plus trip absolutely for free. Now, of course, the charging issue was a little bit of a problem. So we had problems with the pod point chargers and of course we couldn't use the Tesla charger at Carbis Bay at all. So that did have me worried for the first bit of the holiday because I thought, if we can't charge at these two chargers and they're the only chargers in St. Ives, we're gonna have to 
find another town in Cornwall just to specifically charge, which would have kind of not ruined the holiday, but it would have taken a, a day out here and there just to charge the car. But you know what? It was fine in the end. The pod point chargers worked and we just worked around that. And the other point that you have to think about is that you do have to plan your day a little bit around the charge. I mean, if you're going anywhere else in the country, there's a ton of charges and I'm sure you'll be fine. But here, because we only had that slow seven kilowatt pod point charger, we did have to leave the car there for five hours and then go and pick it up. So you do have to think about your day and plan the charging, you know, around that. So that was fine for us, but it's just something to think about. It's something that may annoy some people, but you know, for me, it was absolutely fine. And the, the fact that it didn't cost anything really just added to the, the benefit of having an EV. But honestly, I really enjoyed the journey. I don't know if it's the fact that I had a brand new car to do the trip with, or if it was the features like autopilot that just made the whole journey seem so much easier than I'm used to. Um, as I've mentioned, I do a lot of four hour journeys back to Norwich, and even after two hours, I'm often a little bit tired. So this eight hour journey with autopilot on just felt like a breeze. It was so easy. So having that coupled with some super comfortable seats, a great sound system, it was just a really enjoyable journey and I think you'll enjoy your journey too if you're doing something like that kind of distance. Now I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you've got any questions or comments please do leave them below because I promise I do get back to every single question asked. Now I've got a ton more Tesla videos coming up so make sure you hit the notification bell when you subscribe if you want to see those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.